Okay. Chat. First off, what the hell is this up here? <laughs> Second off, new dev update just dropped. It's in five minutes and 46 seconds. And I'm kind of surprised because they haven't said anything in a f while. So I hope this was in response to a lot of the community being like, hey guys, what the f going on over there? You guys, you guys like die? Like what's going on? So let's see what they have to say. New season starts in a couple days. I'm not going to lie. I feel like myself and it seems like hype overall is, is pretty low. Some of the skins are cool. Like obviously lifeguard and all that stuff. Let's go. One take one mark. No outtakes this time. It's going to be perfect. No outtakes? Hi again. I'm starting that over. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that. But, okay. Unironically, the hardest thing in content is starting talking to the camera. Like the first, like the first sentence. I cannot tell you how many times I've done an ad read or a sponsor thing and I go, Today's sponsor we... Today's sponsor we... And then I, <laughs> and then eventually I get it and then I just go through the whole thing. Hi again, this is Aaron from the Overwatch team and today we have a few updates for season 11 that we're really excited to share with you. After we walk through those updates, our senior systems engineer, Morgan Madrin, is going to take us through a season 10 matchmaker retro and share some of our upcoming plans for season 11. I Let's doubt I'm ever get footage. I don't want to hear it. A few developer updates ago, I talked about how the Overwatch community was on track to reach 100 million players. We're incredibly happy to announce that we've now passed Farming that milestone. To celebrate and express our gratitude to all of you, as well as to do some good in the world, we're... I know they always tout the 100 million players thing, but I really don't like that we can't figure out somehow how many people are constantly playing the game, because I don't think Overwatch has a million daily players. I don't think that... I, I think it's much, much, much lower than that. So, you know, there's alt account Andes, there's the cheater accounts, people farm accounts, and like the number just keeps going up. You know what I mean? Like they're not they, like when you when you when you count total players period, right? Total players period, you can never come down. You can only ever go up, and you can only keep going up, 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 up. And it's like, there's no way Overwatch is only consistently growing. Like, I, I refuse to believe that. So like, I, 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 it's a personal thing. We're bringing back something that our community and honestly Team 4 has loved for years. The Pink Mercy skin will return on June 25th yep. during Season Super 11 cool. in support of the Breast Cancer awesome. Research Foundation. Best thing about this Alongside season so far. Alongside this skin will be the new Rose Gold Mercy skin bundle. Within the Rose Gold Bundle are unique name cards, sprays, and yep. icons created by Overwatch. Wait, this one's a Twitch drop. Isn't this one a Twitch drop? Maybe they f***ed up. This is supposed to be a Twitch drop. This isn't in the bundle. Community. And if you need a place to watch for the Twitch drop, it's on June 25th, twitch.tv slash flask. Artists, Overwatch Sorry, Grandma, and Angela Grandma! Zuber. Both the Pink Mercy skin and the Rose Gold Mercy bundle will be in the shop June 25th through July 8th benefiting the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Make sure to check Super out our blog cool. to learn more information. This is a significant moment for Team 4 because we get to partner Wait, with- Wait, how long have you had pink hair? I, I don't remember seeing that. With you to support the things we all care about together. And now at 100 million strong- oh, a year ago, okay. We can't wait to work together with you and this incredible foundation. Our collaboration with the community doesn't end there. We've partnered with four of your favorite content creators to cook up something we think you're going to love. There will be a community crafted arcade game mode live at launch starting June 20th and running throughout the mid cycle on July 9th. Yeah, okay. We have Emong balancing tank heroes. They didn't choose the photo. Custa on mostly projectile damage heroes. TQQ with the hit scan damage heroes and SK on support heroes. These four had some wild but super fun takes on our heroes. And to preview a few of their changes, Baptiste has donated some of his kit to Anna. Reaper's Wraith might sting a little when he walks past you. Arissa has a new ability, and there's something going on. You evil f You don't no way you did this, dude. There's no way, you evil bastard. Has a new ability. You f 
Kid, oh God, I, I hate him. He's such a goddamn troll. And there's something going on with Hanzo's Storm Arrow that might be a little reminiscent of one of his. Why does everyone do it? Everyone does the, the scatter arrow. Stop, God, stop, guys. Former abilities. We hope all these. Okay, not gonna lie. Okay, that is probably something that. If you've never experienced a creator made patch, those used to be some of the most fun things that they did towards the end of Overwatch 1. Really, really typically cool content. Uh, so excited for that. These things commemorate this moment and express our thanks for being on this wild ride with us. We have a little more to share in this update though, so let me pass things along to my teammate Morgan to cover some of the systems and matchmaker changes in season. Wait, do you think he gave her the shield again too? And just like went old Arissa? Oh, 11. Hi. I'm Morgan Madrin, and I'm a senior engineer on the Overwatch team. I'm here to talk about matchmaking, some of the Why things we learned from so Season different? 10, and share some of the updates we're making to Season 11. In Season 10, we removed the old grouping restriction system and added a new system that separates wide and narrow groups so that they play in separate pools. In the narrow pool, we got significant wins in match quality. In Season 9, for example, three out of four ranked matches we're with players within 2.5 divisions from each other. We think this is great. But the worst case was around 10 divisions wide. In season 10, we were able to reduce this worst case down to only six divisions in the narrow pool. For wide groups, we expected that queue times would yeah, be long. One more time, six. sorry. In season 10, we were able to reduce this worst case down to only six divisions in the narrow pool. For six wide groups, narrow. we expected that queue times would be long but we've heard that you're feeling the pain that two stack queue times are too long. This is because we need to match every two stack with a three stack in the queue. The good news is yep. in season 11, we're increasing the threshold for what we consider a narrow two stack, which we hope will better balance the number of two and three stacks in queue and ultimately give two stacks a much better queue time. For groups of three and five stacks, we're seeing an average of around two to three minute cues which were this is such a simple problem to solve and i hate that i feel like it's such a simple problem to solve here's how you solve it you take the two stacks and three stacks and you put them in their own pool in which they can either get narrow groups or wide groups and then you take five stacks and they only can play against wide groups so five stacks either play against five stacks or they play against two stacks and three stacks that's how you solve it that's it it's so easy. And then that way, if you're a two stack, you don't get punished for for playing with a friend. And so you get put together in the, the less cute, like the, the narrow groups or the wide groups. That way, if you're playing with a duo, you know there's always a chance it could go either way, right? Granted, I know some people would be like, well, I don't want to play against five stacks as a duo. And that I can kind of understand, but I think that also if you play as a duo, you probably aren't going to play against five stacks very often because there's so many duos that like it would help fill the five stacks when they do happen, but they're so much more rare that it would be like once every 20 games or 15 games or something like that. So yeah, that one out of 15 game might not be as fun, but let's be honest with ourselves. There is no such thing as perfect matchmaking, and I can tell you how many games I've played in the narrow groups anyways, where the game blows matchmaking-wise. So, like, I'd rather get a quick game than deal for the 45-minute queue. We're very happy about. For groups with extremely high MMR players and high ranges of MMR, we're seeing especially long queue times as well. These cases yep. present some unique challenges for match quality. We want these matches to feel as competitive as they can, but we also want to balance that against queue times. We're making adjustments to the rules for narrow groups at the top ranks to try to improve this. We also continue to make adjustments to how the What's matchmaker the handles the wide pool. We're still learning which say. factors in match quality are most important for these very wide matches and finding where we can most effectively relax match quality to improve queue times. The team will continue to improve the wide experience and we're working on new tech for our matchmaker that we look forward to sharing with you in future seasons. We can't wait for you to jump into season 11 when it launches on June 20th. As always, please continue to share your thoughts with us and we look forward to the next developer update. See you in game. You're never gonna see my Cowboy Bebop stuff, are you? Oh yeah, that is not what's supposed to be happening. Give me the high hmm. kick. No. So I have thoughts when we like It finish. like hurts my legs.
but we have heard that you're feeling the pain that two sight, yeah. That Been week there. of karate I took when I was younger. <laughs> okay, so I have thoughts. Um, one, I'm glad they did this because clearly they under they heard that people in the community were like, yeah, they're just stopped talking to us. They're not doing anything. I would rather updates like this where we get to see a little bit more of Aaron. We get to hear a little bit about what they're working on. You kind of see the people behind it. You really feel like things are coming, like they're trying to work on stuff. But there's a big but. There are still a few elephants in the room that don't get addressed. Number one is the actual game itself. Granted, I understand that's probably a little bit more uh, of opinion, I guess. I also think that people have been screaming for months that Tank feels terrible. Um, supports feel either like they are doing nothing or they just have to chase their tank around the entire day, entire game. New season in two days, too. Yeah, the two, new season's in two days as well. Um, here's my problem with Overwatch right now. I don't think they'll ever fail in the content department. And I've said this a bajillion times, and I have to keep saying it, because otherwise people just forget. The breast cancer skin, awesome. A lot of, the, like, didn't like the theme of this season, but they still have some good skins pretty much for, like, you know, the lifeguard stuff. And some people like the kaiju stuff, totally fine with that. The creator patch stuff is probably going to be super fun, and it will probably be playing that for like a week. Because um, those are always a blast, and people like learn new things and new ideas that might be even be implemented into the game. But then the big problem hits, where the actual core game experience is awful right now. It's terrible. If nobody wants to actually play the game, but people don't mind watching the game, or they don't mind getting all the stuff for the game, I feel like that should be a... Like a big, you know, hey, what's going on, you know? Obviously, if you, I see a lot of you guys talking about the cheater stuff. They're not going to go on a dev blog or dev director's take and talk about cheaters. That's, you're out of your mind if you think that that's what's going to happen. The best you're going to get is a blog, maybe, unfortunately, which is the, which is just kind of, it, that's just the way it is. So my concern is that well, as we, this game ages, the only content we have to look forward to and the only thing players look forward to are things to open their wallet and spend the money on. To look at, not to play, but just think like, like we're almost like Funko Pop collectors, but for in-game skins, you know? Where it's like everyone gets excited for the skins and gets the new skins and buys them, then they play for three hours, go, wow, this is ass, and then they peace. Long term, I'm scared for that. Uh, in terms of this, of what was said, um, it I know some people are probably gonna say it's a nothing burger and they didn't really talk a whole lot, but they're clearly talking about this season. I know a lot of people probably wanna hear about future stuff that they're working on and how they're gonna improve some of the things that people don't like, um, which I agree with, but I also won't turn my nose up at something like this because I'll be like, I would rather hear more of like what they're working on or what they like or what that's coming up in this current season as opposed to just radio silence because as we've seen in the last few months they kind of went back to their old system of radio silence and shit's been ass so i will give them the benefit of the doubt on that and hope 